For a long time, I've been repeating that good players win 1v1s while better players win 2v1s, and encouraging people to focus on decision making and coordination and not just pure mechanical skill. That is ultimately what wins games of Splatoon more than anything else, but I'd like to make the argument that specifically practicing 1v1s is actually a very useful tool for improving your mechanics, and that people shouldn't just disregard its utility. I find that players tend to settle into one of a couple archetypes as they work their way up through low and mid-level. They tend either to be mechanically strong and not make the greatest choices, or be very strategically and tactically intelligent but miss a lot of opportunities from missing shots, walking and shooting, screwing up movement, stuff like that. For a player whose biggest issue is decision making, 1v1s will only reinforce that problem and I wouldn't recommend them as a coach. But for the other kind of player, 1v1s can do a lot of good. When I say 1v1, here's what I mean. You start a match. Maybe tower control so the objective is hard to play by accident, or clam blitz so you can practice playing around your clam count, avoiding making a power clam, or juggling it effectively in combat. Then you don't play for points at all. That doesn't determine who wins. The goal is to roll out and splat the other player. You're playing for the best KD ratio on the end screen. You can use subs, specials, whatever you'd have access to in the normal game. One important rule is that you have to super jump back to spawn as soon as you get a splat, so you can't take weird positions you wouldn't be able to reach in normal play or spawn lock your opponent, but you still maintain the special advantage you've earned just like you would after winning a full team engagement. As long as everyone goes along with the spirit of the drill and doesn't start labbing out 1v1 specific tactics, here are some positive things that I've found happen. In a team environment, it's easy to get into the mindset that even if you end up losing a fight, as long as someone else was nearby, that's fine, because they can just trade back for you. While you as a teammate should always be looking for opportunities to do the trading back, that doesn't mean that just because you had a teammate nearby means that playing the engagement and getting splatted was advantageous. Your teammate may trade back for you, but think of what they could have been doing instead if they hadn't come to clean up your mess. Yes, ideally the two of you are both engaged on a target at the same time, but realistically, there are going to be some moments where your teammate will need to rotate before you'll have their help, and you need the skill to at least skirmish in the meantime. Also, consider that even if they do trade back successfully, shooting at the opponent you were fighting might make them vulnerable to another opponent who's been called over the way your teammate was, and that now it's a one for two trade, because even though your teammate did their job, you couldn't get any value out of the engagement yourself. A 1v1 removes that crutch for the tactically strong, mechanically weak player. Now it's either they win the engagement they take, or they survive to fight another one. Over a few reps, you'll often see these players starting to realize how much space they actually have to give their opponent to be safe, moving faster, aiming better, using cover more effectively, maintaining stealth and getting better feedback about whether an opponent can see them or not, making smarter predictions about opponent's movements, planning tricks and traps to catch people off guard with, lots of positive habits that they weren't forcing themselves to learn before. Unlike in a normal scrim, in a 1v1 you'll end up in situations that test your mechanics far more frequently, because you can't compensate for your mechanics by retreating behind teammates, painting for special while your teammates engage, or skirmishing and waiting for a teammate to actually get in there and take someone out. You won't have a teammate's special to go in with. You have to create the opportunity yourself, which is a valuable skill to have for desperate situations. Bomb spam isn't going to do as much to lock an approach down because you only have the one bomb at most instead of having your whole team pitching in. Another benefit is that this teaches weapon matchups really well. Don't just put your two splash players in against each other, have your charger fight your frontline. It's great for helping the frontliners figure out what they have cover from and what they don't, and for the charger player to work on keeping an advantageous distance and not missing when they need to hit a clutch shot. If you're finding that one weapon tends to win these 1v1s more often, now you've learned that you want to play that matchup as the winning weapon and avoid it as the losing one, and you've learned why those matchups are advantageous so that if you have to take the engagement, you know what strengths and weaknesses to work around. That doesn't mean you stop playing a losing matchup in 1v1s, because it teaches you under what circumstances you can actually win what's more often a losing matchup. You just want to adjust your expectations according to how the matchup goes and make sure that it doesn't lead to a habit of challenging weapons you shouldn't when you get back into 4v4s. 
Decision making and coordination will give you the best fight possible, so you have an advantage even against more mechanically skilled players. That said, you do need to be able to execute on that engagement, and training your mechanics will make it possible to pull off riskier and more challenging decisions and shot calls. I think a lot of the sentiment against 1v1s arises out of a prevalence of the player archetype of the mechanical beast who feeds, a very visible frustrating presence in the competitive environment. Everyone wants a teammate who they can actually play around, someone they can help instead of someone they need to just hope will get a pick unassisted. Nobody wants some meathead challenging them to a 1v1 and assuming they'd be the better Splatoon player if they won. But as a player whose mechanics are not my strong suit, I think playing 1v1s forced me to grow up and take more accountability for how often I go down and leave my teammates to sort things out. I wouldn't rule it out as a training tool if that outcome seems like something you're looking for.